Hello, welcome to Bird's Eye View. In this series, we'll discuss everything bus related from the perspective of an industry leading school bus manufacturer. I'm Lauren Beatty, Grants Manager at Bluebird. And I'm Albert Burley, Bluebird's Executive Director of EV Business Development. In this season, we'll discuss how to electrify your school bus fleet. So, let's jump on the bus. Let's get started. Hi, today we're going to talk about the growth of the EV industry and what you can do if you're interested in electrifying your school bus fleet. So, Albert. Today, you're not our featured speaker, but can you tell me who is? Yeah, we have a guest speaker today. Uh, Andy Moore has joined us. Um, Andy's with Bluebird. Why don't you tell us what you do uh, here at Bluebird and what your role is? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here to talk about EVs. We can tell. So I have been with Bluebird for nine years, and in that time, I've held a variety of roles at the company doing a lot of different things. But in all of those roles, I've had a specific focus on electrification. Nice. Yeah, you've been uh, there from the beginning, Andy. That's great. So... This is good. I'm going to kick right off with some questions for you. Um, EV school buses, really the fastest growing segment of the school bus industry. Uh, why is that? When did that all start? And really, what was that kind of catalyst for that growth? Well, if you want to talk about when EV school buses really started, you'll have to go way before when I started. Uh, Bluebird actually introduced our first electric school bus way back in 1994, uh, ahead of the Atlanta Olympics. We built, I think, about a dozen buses put them into service during the Olympic Games, and they were used to transport athletes uh, to and from event venues. It was really early on, early technology then, um, used a lot of lead-acid batteries. I think it took a full day and a half to charge, uh, so kind of ahead of its time. But even then, Bluebird was thinking about being on the cutting edge and putting a zero-emission product on the road. So when did we first go to market with our EVs today? So the new generation, kind of more modern electric vehicle, we put the first ones on the road in 2018. Uh, this got started, really the program got started in the 2016 timeframe with a grant that we received from the Department of Energy. On that, we were looking at the commercialization of electric school buses, what would be some of the hurdles to overcome, and work through some of those early stage challenges in order to put a good product on the road. Pretty cool. So we were one of the first in the modern kind of day EV school bus to really kick off this this whole wave of uh, interest in electrification. Absolutely. And we're actually coming up pretty soon on our thousandth EV put on the road, including all types, A, C, and D. So that's going to be a real exciting milestone. Very cool. You often hear that school buses are the perfect vehicle for electrification. Can you explain why? Absolutely, and it really is one of the best duty cycles for electrification. The reason being is that a school route is set and it's defined. It's relatively short. In fact, an NREL study that we've looked at and used before shows that about 94% of school bus routes are 100 miles in le or less, and that's for the day. So that's 50 miles in the morning and 50 miles in the afternoon. So more than enough capacity to get through a full route day for most, most districts on one charge. Plus, you have the opportunity to charge in the middle of the day. For some of those uh, longer routes, like I said, you can charge in the middle of the day. And then once you're at the end of the day, you can charge overnight using a, a slower charge rate, and you're ready to go the next morning. Yeah, you mentioned duty cycle. When I think about school buses, obviously a lot of start and stop. Uh, is that beneficial for oh, electric buses? It's actually perfect for electrification, where you lose a lot of efficiency in an internal combustion engine. Uh, you look at a city versus highway mileage on your truck or car. Uh, highway is usually a lot better because they're more efficient at high speeds, not a lot of start-stop. It's actually the opposite for electric vehicles. All that starting and stopping, especially the stopping part, is, is good because the, the bus can actually regenerate electricity and put it back in the batteries. So the more start-stop you have for an electric vehicle, the more range you get, not to mention how quiet they are. Yeah, huge benefit for being quiet. Certainly got to be better for the kids, ride better for the driver. They don't have all that distraction. So that's and the biggest, very nice. The biggest benefit being zero emissions. No, no fuel is being burned. Nothing is coming out of a tailpipe. It's clean, quiet school bus operation. Yeah, no fuel has got to be savings, right, for the energy cost versus putting diesel in this thing every day. Absolutely. You look at the cost of diesel prices today just continue to seem to go up and up. Uh, 
especially when you charge a bus overnight when there's low low electric rates, uh, the the savings on fuel alone can be quite significant. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about why there's such a sudden interest in EV? Uh, well, just uh, nationwide and really kind of globally, electric vehicles are really kind of having a moment now. All the big automakers are coming out with new vehicles. Um, so, so electrification is, is, is popular, but especially for, for school buses, there was uh, legislation passed in the bipartisan infrastructure bill that actually allocated and earmarked funds for electric buses. Uh, we talked about how the duty cycle is perfect, and then couple that with uh, the incentives and the grants from the federal government, and it just seems like it's a win-win to get these out, in the, out on the road and uh, get them running. So if I'm a school district and I want to electrify my fleet, what, what do you suggest I do first? Uh, well, I would, I would talk to, um, you know, one of your, your representatives, one of your OEM representatives, to find out which, which bus routes are appropriate for, for electrification. We, we recognize that, you know, super long routes, maybe with a lot of highway, may not be the perfect application right now uh, with the buses. So, so identifying which routes are good for candidates for electrification. Uh, from there, Bluebird has a great uh, kind of ecosystem, which we call Bluebird Energy Services, which allows us to help you through that whole process, looking at route planning, looking at infrastructure requirements, because that's a big thing that's going to be, a, is one of the hurdles that, that needs to overcome is when you think about an electric vehicle, how you fuel it and that infrastructure needed, the chargers, all of the utility work, that's something else to work through. Mm -hmm. But, but working with Bluebird Energy Services, we have uh, some great partners that are here to help you through that whole process to, to uh, adopt and electrify your fleet. Could you right. talk a little bit about some of those partners? In Charge, I know, is major. Yeah, In Charge is somebody we use that Andy is familiar with. They are a charging partner and certainly can come in and do those, help you with the route assessments, look at what charging equipment, what you know, level two slow charge versus fast charging, what makes the most sense, right, for that particular district? Really a key step in electrifying and understanding what's needed to electrify your fleet. But we started this talking about grant funding. Albert, do you know anybody that could help customers with grant funding? You know, I actually do. Here at Bluebird, we actually have a grants <laughs> manager who... That would be me. At, that would be Lauren Beatty. Yes. Who, uh, <laughs> she just lives her whole day about grants and is a great resource it is for school districts. Yes. So I came on board about a year ago mm -hmm. um, to help particularly with what Andy uh, referenced for the um, bipartisan um, bill and the clean school bus program. So I'm very interested in helping our school districts um, electrify their fleet and can help walk through that whole process. Yep. Awesome. So, I mean, still, when you think about it, a lot of positives, obviously, for EV growth, but it's still a really small piece of the market. I mean, what are some of those roadblocks you think are kind of keeping a quicker adoption uh, rate on electric school buses? Yeah, like we talked about, the, the cost of the bus is, is significantly more than a traditional internal combustion engine. Um, there's a lot of rare earth minerals uh, used in the batteries, the, the components, uh, lower volumes. As, as adoption increases, we expect those the, that cost to come down, but Right now, we have the advantage, like we just talked about, is the grant funding. So that, that'll really help with that adoption. Second, like I mentioned, was infrastructure. Uh, making sure that you're planning, you're future-proofing, uh, whether you need utility upgrades uh, at your location where you're going to electrify, uh, working through that whole process to make sure you've got everything ready so when your bus is delivered, you can plug it up and charge. Uh, those are really two of the kind of biggest, biggest hurdles. The third, I would say, is just education. Uh, learning what an electric bus can and can't do, what um, really how, how fun they are to drive, mm -hmm. uh, really what their capability are. Uh, I know a lot of people are used to how a diesel works in their fleet. It's reliable. Uh, they've been using them for decades. And so this is something new. Uh, that's nothing to be afraid of. It's actually very exciting. And once you get behind the wheel of an electric, an electric bus, it, it, that's really what turns uh, a lot of people on to to electrification. Yep. And you're such an advocate that you and your wife drive a, an electric minivan. 
We do. We, uh, it's a plug-in hybrid uh, electric minivan. We actually fight over who gets to drive it each day. Um, <laughs> she great. usually wins that fight. But, uh, but no, it's great. It, it, it's perfect for day-to-day uh, -day around, around town. Um, if we have to go uh, on longer trips, it's a hybrid, but mm -hmm. it's, it's so great. It has a range. I, I, I believe it. I believe in electrification. That's cool. So what resources are out there if customers want to start just educating themselves? Are there places you would direct them to to just learn more about EV in general? Yes. So there is an organization called the World Resources Institute that uh, launched with a grant from the Bezos Foundation a, um, a program specifically for clean school buses. They have put together uh, a wealth of information about electrification, about all the buses that are out and available, what they're, um, and they constantly update it, but what the specifications are for different OEMs, just everything it, that you need to know, you can find at their, at their, on their website, and it's, it's free and publicly available. That's, that's one place to start. Uh, second is with your OEM uh, sales rep. Uh, we've done a lot of training here at Bluebird with you and your team uh, to really go out and educate people about the benefits and advantages of electrification. Uh, finally, if you really get serious about it, uh, you can talk to your utilities about electrical upgrades for infrastructure like we talked about. Mm -hmm. Many states' uh, utilities have make-ready programs that will actually help fund some of that infrastructure improvement. Uh, and there's just a lot of resources out there that, uh, that Bluebird can help you with, again, through our, our Bluebird Energy services. Fantastic. Well, it sounds like there's a lot of opportunities um, to take advantage of. You know, electrification is really exciting. Uh, we believe in it here at Bluebird. It's something that we see as the future of school bus transportation. It's, it's really a bright future. So bright, in fact, that I've got to wear shades. Yes, Andy, the future certainly is bright. And that's all the time we have today. Thankfully, that's our bird's eye view on school bus electrification. <laughs>